If you're looking to build a gaming PC using a fully custom system integrator that's tailored to your personal needs and wants, then you've probably heard of a brand called CLX. And for those of you who hate paying more for pre-builds like CLX, but love building your own computer, keep watching because I've got something special for you too. I am also going to be showing you every single piece that you need to buy and where to get it if you'd like to build this exact machine all by yourself at a much lower price. This is my honest and unbiased review of the CLX. Lex Horus. Now I've already done a more fun and entertaining unboxing of this computer, but this video is the important one that you need to watch if you actually plan on buying this PC. This is a super PC for gamers or creative professionals or both. And I've spent a week pushing this computer to its absolute max to show you what it is and isn't actually capable of. This is the super powerful Intel i9 12900K processor with an Nvidia GeForce RTX 3090 GPU and 32 gigabytes of 5600 megahertz of DDR5 RAM. That's pretty fast. Yes, these are extreme specs and it makes it one expensive computer. So please wait to the end of this video before clicking on one of my links in the description to actually purchase this machine. I've also included links to every other computer that I compare this pre-build to as well. CLX let me borrow this to check it out, but I'm in no way obligated to say anything positive about it. In this video, I'll be giving you my take on the design and build quality, internals, thermals, fan noise, overall ease of use, and my top pros and cons. I'm also going to be showing you the configuration that I recommend if this computer is understandably outside of your budget. And if you still have any questions after watching this entire video, just shoot me a comment. And if you're publicly subscribed, I guarantee a personal response. So getting into the design and internals of this PC, the configuration that was sent to me was built with the popular O11 case at its base. The one that they had available was actually an inverted one with the graphics card on top and all the wording upside down, but I took everything apart and rearranged it to make it not inverted because I'm OCD like that. I like all the words and labels of my GPU and the ports to be right side up. But some people actually prefer an inverted chassis and they want to put their computer on the other side of their desk with all the internals and RGB goodness still facing inwards. So you can purchase it either inverted or non-inverted right here along with these other eight cases that you start your build from. Then you can actually customize it even further with your own exterior color finish or texture. They actually fitted this one for me with one of the nicest fan options with 10 of the Gamdias Aeolus M2 fans. But you can see here that there's quite a bit of other options to choose from. From there, you choose your processor with a plethora of different options of AMD or Intel processors, what motherboard you want. Ours is the Z690 Steel Legend motherboard. If you wanna make sure that you're buying this exact version I have here from CLX, then click on my link below in the description to make sure you know what you're getting and can be positive that all the tests that I ran on this machine will work the same with your machine. Then you choose your GPU. Ours is the 3090, but you can go all the way up to an insane 3090 Ti. This founder's edition of the 3090 is massive. I love any time that I can get my hands on an actual NVIDIA 3090 because a lot of the pre-builds come with third-party GPUs. Just wait till you see how this thing did in my benchmark tests. You can see right here as you adjust your configuration how that should affect gaming performance. And we'll show you how accurate that really is here in a sec. Then onto the RAM, there's a bunch of different options to choose from for the less expensive slower speeds, but less and less as you go higher. The fastest option that we got is the G-Skill Trident Z5 RGB DDR5 RAM at 5600 megahertz. Then you get to choose your own power supply. For a nearly maxed out configuration like this one, I recommend a 1000 watt PSU. The one that we got is the EVGA Supernova 1000 G5 80 plus gold power supply. Fully modular, which means it's easily upgradable and easily replaceable. You can save a little money by going non-modular, but I don't really recommend that. You can then select what colors you want your cables to be. White is definitely my favorite for a white chassis. Then choose your SSD for your main hard drive. Ours is the super fast Samsung 980 Pro Gen 4 X4 SSD drive. And I'll show you how fast that tested here in a sec. They also hooked me up with four terabytes of additional hard drive storage. Then you'll select your sound card or network cards. We just got the onboard network and sound card and that's pretty sufficient 
sufficient for what we need. Capture card if you plan to be doing any streaming or recording of your gameplay. I recommend this Elgato 4K 60 Pro, but it is a little crazy that they mark it up $100 just to put it in there for you. I'm going to put a link in the description to get that separately. If you don't actually need 4K and 1080p is sufficient for you, then the Elgato HD 60 is good too. And that one is only marked up by $30. For the liquid cooling, we actually got the Enermax LickMax 3 RGB 360 millimeter all-in-one option. I actually don't recommend anything less than a 360 millimeter for a jacked up PC like this. Then select your software and any other additional accessories that you might want. So adding all this up, this monster of a PC taps out at nearly $4,500. But using the code that I have in the description will bring it down to around $4,200. I'll show you a much less expensive configuration that's also pretty fast a little later. In contrast, the other pre-builds that I'll be comparing the performance to in this video, like the Alienware Aurora R13 is just a little bit more than that at $4,300. The Corsair Vengeance i7-300 at only $3,700. And the Skytech Prism 2 just dropped in price, and that is also now only $3,700. And the HP Omen 45L at less than $3,400. But you'll see here in a sec that specs and pricing don't exactly tell the whole story. The price to performance ratio is what you need to keep in mind. And if you really can't stand pre-builds anymore and know how to build your own, you can see here that adding up all of the parts that you would need to get separately to build this exact monster that I have here will cost you about $500 less. I've sourced all of the cheapest places to get each part and put those links in the description as well. Is having a professional put all of this together for you worth $500? I'll let you be the judge after everything else that I have to say about this pre-build. The quality of the parts that make up this machine really are top-notch, so I was a little disappointed when my machine came with a few issues. I talk about it a little more in my unboxing video, but the front glass panel was completely popped off and disconnected from the rest of the case, and the liquid cooler radiator and fans were hanging by only one screw in the corner. I contacted my rep at CLX and they assured me that that rarely ever happens, and that unfortunately UPS doesn't always handle their computers with care, but I didn't find any loose screws within the case or the box, so it almost appears like the front glass panel and the radiator fans never had the necessary screws before shipping. These were quick fixes though with the bag of extra screws that they supply you with and luckily due to the great foam packaging there wasn't a scratch on the front glass panel. Very pleased with this case overall. Plenty of space for upgrades, cable management, and airflow and all of the internals on the front and even the back were very easily accessible. Now for the ports on the back we've got a BIOS flashback button, two USB 3.2 gen 1 ports, and a PS2 port if you've got an older keyboard or mouse, an HDMI port, and a display port and two connectors for your antennas, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 type C port and a USB 3.2 Gen 2 type A port, two more USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports and a 2.5 G LAN RJ45 Ethernet port and it's even got an optical spit if out port for higher quality audio and then a rear speaker port and subwoofer and at the bottom your microphone line in and line out and then beneath all of that your ports on the back of the 3090 GPU, an HDMI 2.1 port and three display ports. And then for the ports on the front, we have a USB Type-C 3.1 port, two USB-A 3.0 ports, and a headphone and microphone combo jack. And then on that front corner, a power button, a reset button, a color mode button for controlling the RGB lighting effects, and a static color button for cycling between seven different solid colors. Now for the thermals. 10 fans and a 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler in a well laid out case. That gave us some great temps. You can see from my thermal imaging test how well this case really does with airflow. A lot of heat from the CPU escaping out the back through that massive radiator. And around front, you can see how hot the GPU gets with the majority of all the heat from this computer escaping out the top vents. And for actual gaming thermals, at 1080p, a large portion of the games yielded the lowest CPU temps. And then moving up to 4K, you can see that it had closer temps to the others. And for the GPU, rather low temperatures for most games in our 1080p tests, and by far the lowest when it came to pushing these games to their max in 4k. I actually tested nine games total and these were the average temps for each resolution on the GPU and CPU across all games. The absolute lowest in every category. Fan noise. This computer definitely proved itself to be worthy when it came to cooling and fan noise was surprisingly pretty low as well. In the lowest fan setting I got about 42.5 decibels. At the middle setting was about 43 decibels. 
and with maxed out settings and performance mode, it came out to 43.5 decibels. Barely any difference when pushing the fans to their maximum highest presets. I always do my tests at maximum fan presets to keep the playing field even and fair, but when I tested games at the lowest fan presets, it didn't change performance at all. Probably because everything was being cooled so efficiently already that temperatures were well below throttling limits. Now for the performance, the most important part of this review. For Geekbench 5, we got a single core score of 1813 and a multi core score of 17,854. Second place in the multi-core, but the lowest of all of them for the single core, surprisingly. For Cinebench R23, which simulates its 3D rendering power, we got a multi-core score of 24,441 and a single core score of 1770. This took second place right behind the Skytech Prism 2. For 3D Mark, we got an overall score of 18,885, a graphic score of 18,926, and a CPU score of 18,656. For the main drive, the SSD that everything is stored on, I got speed of 6.8 gigabits read and 4.9 gigabytes write, which is incredibly fast. And if you plan to be doing any crypto mining with this computer when you're not using it, you'll probably be a little disappointed as I could not push this thing past 100 mega hash per second. But things were a little brighter when it came to our gaming benchmarks. These were our average FPS results that we got for several games at their highest preset settings in HD. You can see that the CLX Horus had more games with the highest FPS than any other 12th gen pre-built that I've tested. It also competed pretty well at 1440p as well with the HP Omen 45L and Skytech Prism 2 being a little bit closer. And when pushing this machine even harder at 4k resolutions, the HP Omen 45L was nearly just as fast. And here's another condensed graph showing the average frames per second across nine games on all four machines at different resolutions. You can see that this computer was overall the best in every resolution except for 1080p where the Skytech Prism 2 was the fastest. And here's a few Pugin benchmark tests for all the creatives out there. For Adobe Premiere, we got 1083, Adobe Photoshop 1311, and DaVinci Resolve 2087. Pretty average compared to the rest, except for DaVinci, where it was massively ahead of the rest. And if you're going to use this computer connected to VR, you will have a pleasant experience, but I expected a score of a little higher than 17,474 for our VR Mark benchmark tests. This was a thousand points lower than the Skytech Prism 2. Now, for the software, the only program that you'll have right off the bat is this one from AS Rock that allows you to control your RGB lighting effects. Here you can change your different colors and animations, but past that you're pretty much left on your own as CLX doesn't come with any pre-installed software that shows you things like system stats or gives you any thermal profiles or fan controls. With the way that this computer starts you out, all of that would need to be handled within the BIOS. And fortunately, there is an incredible amount of control within the BIOS for those of you who want to get deep into the performance and see how much further you can push it. I would be careful with these settings though, unless you really know what you're doing. Now my overall top reasons to not buy this computer. Number one is that price. Yes, this computer is pretty fast, especially in gameplay, but when it comes to the performance to price ratio, this computer is a little overpriced. So I can save you a little money if you do plan to get this computer, downgrade it to the 3080, get the i7, get the 4800 megahertz RAM, remove that four terabyte extra storage. You can always upgrade that later. Upgrading the RAM later is pretty easy as well and get the less expensive CPU cooler. Having the super fast 980 Pro SSD isn't 100% necessary either. And number two is the lack of control. Yes, there's a lot that you can do within the BIOS, but most other pre-builds come with their own software that allow you to adjust your fan profiles and thermals in a much more intuitive and easy way. Now my overall top reasons to get this computer, number one is that gaming performance. I was very pleased that overall this computer handled games better than all the rest. And number two were those thermals. Not only did it perform the best in gaming, but for it to have the lowest temperatures as well is pretty impressive. And number three was the fan noise. For it to have the fastest gameplay and the lowest temperatures and the least amount of fan noise, to have all three of those is pretty impressive. And because it cooled the machine so well, even at the lowest preset settings for the fans, I didn't notice any performance decrease. So do I actually recommend this machine? If you want the fastest and smoothest gameplay, the lowest temps, which will prolong the life of this computer, 
computer and the lowest fan noise and don't mind paying extra for it to be built for you, then yes, I do recommend this for you. That's if you've got a lot of money and you just really, really don't want to put this together yourself. I found something interesting that I think CLX probably is not going to like. This video is not about them though. It's about you. And I have to be 100% honest with you guys. I know I said there was about a $500 difference if you build it yourself. That was when I was comparing spec for spec, but right now the 3090 is just way overpriced because it's out of stock everywhere. So actually, if you get the newer and faster 3090 Ti, which is in stock, that'll save you another $600 for a faster GPU, which makes the difference between building this PC yourself or having a professional do it closer to $1,200. One of the main reasons people choose to go with CLX anyways, though, is because of their lifetime tech support. For as long as you have this PC, you have access to CLX's US-based customer service team with expert technicians that'll help you get your computer back to its full potential. It's more for the ballers though and not necessarily for those that are on a tight budget. Me saying this means there probably won't be that many sales generated from this video, which means I won't get any affiliate commission. So if you do plan to take this information to build your own version of this computer, please remember to use my affiliate links for all of these parts in the description below as I get a small commission and no cost to you for every single purchase made. And it's actually a major factor in keeping this channel going and getting better and better for you. I'd also like to thank all of my members for their monthly support of this channel. I really appreciate you guys. Every little bit helps. If you'd like to see your name here on all of my videos as well as other perks, then please consider becoming a channel member by clicking on the join button below. And remember, every week I do a giveaway that randomly selects someone who's interacted with this channel in some way or filled out the form in the description. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with notifications turn on to stay up to date with that as well as staying up to date with all of my latest gaming PCs. And the winner for this week is... Twisted Charlie TV. Thanks for watching guys. I love you guys. God bless.